Hello, I'm Chris Beasley with Gamery Instruments, and in this short video I'd like to show you some key features that you could use for uh, acquiring, analyzing uh, electrochemical and PETA spectroscopy data. So uh, just very briefly here, as you would expect as from most potentially step manufacturers these days, um, you know, we have a full lineup of instruments and techniques for impedance, uh, that being potentially a static EIS, galvanostatic EIS, hybrid EIS, which is a technique where we run galvanostatically, but you get to input a cell voltage or an AC voltage uh, that you want to maintain, and we adjust the current level based on the current impedance that, we're, that we've just measured. We also have my shot key single frequency EIS, so you can just measure single frequency versus time. And of course, we have multi sign that can help you reduce your data acquisition time. So, in this, uh, as I said in this short video, I just want to highlight a few key features of the software that can make your life easier. Uh, those are total harmonic distortion, which is a way to measure nonlinearity in your cell's response. Drift correction, which is a way to correct, uh, it's just like it sounds, it's a way to correct for your cell's voltage drifting. And also in terms of analysis then, I want to show you a function called distribution of relaxation times, which is a method to convert frequency data into time domain data to help you identify how many uh, RC time constants you might have. So let's go over what total harmonic distortion is. And obviously within uh, this short video that I'm going to have, I can't get through everything, but we do have a very good application note on our website that explains this in more detail. Or of course, you can go to the literature to figure out what this is. But uh, briefly, total harmonic distortion is a measure measurement of nonlinear response from a system. So this would be from your cell. And if you, I'm going to assume you know something about EIS. Uh, if you, I mean, you should know that EIS response needs to be linear, causal, and stable for the results to be considered as possibly valid. Uh, if any one of those three fails, then your your data are not valid for quantitative purposes. And so THD uh, helps us identify this nonlinearity. So on the right, I show two sample plots. Uh, the top one is a uh, it's a it's a FFT of a linear sine wave, and as you can see, at a single frequency, and we see the magnitude of that frequency. You know, there's no other uh, harmonics as we would call them. So there's there's one peak there at the fundamental frequency of that sine wave. In the lower box, we can see a nonlinear response for a single frequency sine wave. And also then what we see in this magnitude plot is we see the fundamental plus we see all of the harmonics. Um, again, this is just a theoretical example, but we see the harmonics, the second, the third, fourth, all the way up to the 11th. And of course, this would continue on um, indefinitely in theory. So THD is a way to uh, let you measure that nonlinearity. And in terms of uh, what this looks like for data acquisition, this is very simple. We would choose to run, say, potentially a static EIS. It loads up our data acquisition script, and we would input the parameters that we typically might want for our experiment. And then down here, uh, we have the option to turn on our total harmonic distortion measurement. So this will turn on the measurement. Uh, we'll also see in a, another slide or two about drift correction. And so if you wanted to run drift correction at the same time, if you knew your cell voltage was going to be drifting, you can turn this on at the same time. And we click OK and run your experiment. So let's jump back to uh, looking at some actual data. So we don't want to run, since we're short on time, we don't want to run through a full data acquisition. I'll show you some data that was generated uh, where we measured total harmonic distortion. And then uh, you can see how these results would be presented. So these are uh, 
impedance plots, Bode plots of uh, 2032 coin cell that we measured at different AC amplitudes. You can see 4 milliamps, 10 milliamps, 20, and 40 milliamps. And in the Bode plot here on the left, we can see a rather nice response um, the, for the gold hues, the gold and orange hues. Uh, those are uh, typical linear responses that you would get. But as you can see as you go to a higher amplitude and higher AC amplitude, uh, you generate some nonlinearity. Uh, at these lower frequencies. And if we want to examine uh, the magnitude of that nonlinearity, uh, we would go ahead and choose to plot the total harmonic distortion or the potential. Uh, we calculate total harmonic distortion for the potential and for current. And of course, we also let you view uh, the individual harmonic distortions for each of those harmonics. We don't show that here just to save time. So. You can see uh, in at the lower currents, the 4 milliamp and 10 milliamps, we have very low uh, amounts of total harmonic distortion, so we likely maintain linearity. And then for the blue hues, we can see higher amounts of total harmonic distortion. And um, there's no general guidance for what is an acceptable amount of total harmonic distortion that is for you to interpret and decide uh, for your particular system. But we wanted to show that you can measure that gear. So let's move on to drift correction to try to speed things up. Um, there's lots of times that uh, you might run into a cell where as you go to lower and lower frequencies, that cell voltage is drifting. Um, in order for ES results to be valid, they need to be linear, stable, and causal. And if your cell is drifting, then uh, you have a problem. So drift correction can be used to remove this instability uh, but we want to warn you that once you apply this drift correction, quantitative interpretation becomes rather difficult. Uh, and personally, we would recommend drift correction is used for qualitative interpretation. Otherwise, people would question the validity of your data. But again, as you saw, it can be applied. Uh, what might this look like? Uh, we have here we have an 18650 that we applied a small DC offset. Uh, to move the cell voltage during impedance uh, during this particular uh, hybrid EIS measurement. And we can see at the higher frequencies, this small offset doesn't really change the cell voltage much because we don't see much in, in, uh, in terms of the corrected and uncorrected data. So as we get to lower and lower frequencies, though, uh, we can see that the cell actually was drifting because of this, this DC offset that we were applying, purposely causing the drift. And so the uh, red curve is actually the corrected, uh, the drift corrected impedance plot. So again, uh, that functionality is there. It's up to you to decide how you would like to use that. And lastly, um, I wanted to talk briefly about uh, an analysis technique called distribution and relaxation times. Um, as we all know, generating equivalent circuit models for fitting can sometimes be difficult, especially as you get the more complex systems. They may require more complex models. It's not always ideal to make it more complex. But uh, anyway, DRT is a method that converts your frequency domain data to time domain data to aid in the development of those equivalent circuit models. Uh, and let's, let's quickly look at how two examples uh, where this could be used. And as you can see, this data is of a dummy cell. So a single RC time constant uh, dummy cell. It's a Randall's, a simplified Randall cell. If you go to impedance and you do distribution of relaxation times, you can do choose to do auto fit. There are some advanced parameters that you can change here. Uh, but I'm just going to choose to do auto fit to show you what this looks like. We add a tab over here, and then we make a plot of the distribution of relaxation times. And so here's your time domain data, single peak, single RC time constant. If we look at more complicated data, so this data, obviously, you can see is much more complicated. This is a dye solar cell. There's multiple interfaces. There's a separator in this cell. So we have plenty of RC time constants. 
So again, if we go to the impedance menu, click on distribution and relaxation times, we're just gonna do an auto fit here. And we can then go to this last tab and we see a much more complicated spectrum compared to the, the uh, Randall's dummy cell that I just showed. And of course we see multiple peaks <clears throat> that could be related to multiple uh, time constants here. So again, these are all useful tools that you could use uh, for, your, for your data acquisition and data analysis. If we go back, uh, in summary, we talked briefly about total harmonic distortion and it being a method to help you identify nonlinearity. We talked about drift correction, which is a method to help correct a drifting cell voltage. And lastly, I just showed you the uh, DRT, which is a method to help you generate uh, equivalent circuit models for fitting. Thank you.